proceeding to order. And um, may I have someone approve the agenda, please? I, I, I will. Patty and Tom, Tom, Patty and Tom approve the agenda. So I don't know, I always forget. All those in favor of approving the agenda, just raise <laughs> your hands. Oh, okay, cute, thank you. We're good, church, <laughs> thanks for the yes. Um, any pecuniary interest or nature of as such that has to be disclosed? Thank you, none. And then we need to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. So is there anybody who would like to move that we approve the minutes of the previous meeting? I will. All approve. right, Tom moved and who's seconding? Everyone. All right, Brian, all in favor? And yep. we're good, thank you. <laughs> and um, now we do have to go into the business arising from the minutes and here we are going. The first thing is the um, main entry and Jeremy, that's you. Yes, thank you. Well, um, attached to your package is a little uh, uh, small, very small proposal and with some attachments to it, supporting it. And uh, essentially, uh, I'm just trying to find it myself here. But essentially, um, yeah, we had two, uh, a year ago, uh, there was a, a quote presented and then just uh, virtually to the day, uh, a year later, we got another uh, proposal. And it came after your last meeting, which I wasn't able to attend. But um, what it uh, it, uh, it does is lay out what, what the pieces of the uh, equipment and uh, construction and so on. And uh, it's a it's a it's getting into a large sum of money. So I knew very well that it's probably not the time to to be you know pushing hard to see, hopefully get, get, some, get some approval to move ahead. But uh, anyway, for better or worse, I, there is an amount um, that uh, um, when I've gone back to, to these uh, suppliers, in fact, what they've come back and said, actually, there are some other elements that need to, to be added to this to make it to the way we had requested it. And that was for access and with the, you know, the digital locks and the ability to remotely apply uh, code so that people could come on a temporary pass. So uh, that's where uh, they, they both failed to, to, to do that. And um, so I'm going to ask if we could defer this until I get that final quotation from them. Um, but what you can see is that it's a fairly large amount, but I, even though it is, I was wondering if there were a way to, you know, segment it so that possibly we could consider it for being uh, part of the gift that uh, Lana was presenting at Tom, you might want to comment to that, but I thought it would be a very nice gesture to, you know, have that tribute to say this is the main entry to the station on the green uh, yeah, that's one thing as a as a sponsor or in uh, in dedication, and the other one is whether the town might respond with accessibility assistance. Um, you know, again, it's not the right time to be asking this, but in due course, if we could think about it. So, what I'm asking is, can we defer this for uh, a couple of meetings, perhaps, or at least one more meeting, and then. Um, so we can get the all of it, and then, uh, and then consider it when, when in the year it might be appropriate to go ahead. So that's my yes, please. Uh, yes, yes, Barry. Barry, we we use all these cards for our council meetings. Want to speak? No. Yes, I'm just so used to using them. We use them for county. We use them for pretty much all our meetings. So I'm trying to find the report and I'm having a hard time finding the email that has the report in it. Um, so Tom briefly, 
uh, or Tom, sorry, Jeremy, briefly, can you tell me what the dollar amounts were as of now without the additional? What, if you could please. for a minute, Barry, please. Uh, oh, I'm, I said, uh, if Jeremy could just give me those dollar amounts of the two quotes we have. I've got it right here. If Jeremy can't find it, um, GE Salos, um, eight thousand four hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Talbot Contracting, ten thousand four hundred and twenty dollars. And beside that, it says no HST. I'm. I, does that mean there is no HST, or does it mean it's not included? I don't know. Not included is what. Not not included. Okay, so then there would be HST on top of that. So, so, so um, I have no problem going to to council and ask for money. And actually, timing is perfect because we are having a meeting this afternoon, an in-camera meeting on the future of all the small halls in uh, in Clearview, and that's this afternoon. So now, um, yeah, that's. That's actually created another little tiny issue, but okay. Yeah, so I uh, haven't seen the report yet. Apparently, we're going to see the report at the meeting on what it says. I know I had a talk with the mayor about that and in saying, well, we have some things to do, you know, to, to bring us up to accessibility standards. And his first comment to me was, well, I'm not giving you guys any money. You're not getting any money because you guys have $90,000 sitting in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I have no idea where you got that number from. Who thinks no who has ninety thousand dollars? Us? Our? Our? Well, our apparently board? he seems to think that station on the green has ninety thousand dollars sitting in a bank account. Oh. So, okay. uh, I sort of corrected corrected him. We did him on that. So we did uh, before we did before I took my trip down to St. Bart's over Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's what happened to it. That's what it was. Oh yeah. And you well, didn't you know, make the rest of them. Gary, when you are talking to them, one right. of the things, like if you are going to ask for money, the one thing that you can push for is even if they, they say no to everything, the fact of right. the matter is we're trying to take and make that main entry an accessibility entrance. Because right now, if you think about it, anybody who goes into the station who needs an accessible entrance has to right. go in the washroom entrance yes. and then around and that is i think that's inappropriate yeah i don't Pardon me? i don't think it's inappropriate yeah. well, i do they yeah. should people should people who need accessibility help should be able to go in the main entrance just like everybody else yeah so so anyway so so i guess the decision it, it would be nice to know if we're going to support uh, 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 the donation that was given to us by, you know, who one of our favorite members who have who have left us. Uh, are, are are we going to use that money towards half? Like, I just need to know: are we asking for half, or are we asking for all? That's, yeah. and it's always easier to ask for half than it is for all. Yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. So, so thanks, Barry. That's very good. Uh, uh, that's what I was kind of thing I was hoping would happen. The the report is actually, and Kayla can comment, but. It's, it's attached to the to the uh, minutes that were, and I think the minutes were sent out earlier, and uh, it uh, it's order of magnitude is say ten thousand dollars, and yes, if we could seek uh, even thirty percent or fifty percent would be nice. Fifty percent, yeah. So. So the, the, the general uh, you know, rule of thumb has been, because I know there's been other halls that have asked for money and, and, and when we sort of go, and, and Steve Sage supported this too, that, that this is typically what it's for, where, where the halls you know, have a major expense and, and we cover half and then uh, the council, the, you know, the council, the township covers half. So 50-50 is a, you know, a, a fair thing and I have no problem asking for that. I can't and, the, and then the only of. thing is we would need we would need to know exactly how much but we have two prices yeah and uh, I would say if you're going to ask 50 50 at least tell them that the price is approximately ten thousand dollars right because <laughs> yeah. we don't know for sure Jeremy did you do you 
ever, did you ever get anything that can explain? It is quite a difference. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's $2,000 difference between the two quotes. Yeah. Have yeah. you any idea why? Yeah. So uh, the, the first uh, quote included a, a laptop PC, and that was to control um, the access. But uh, well, that's, that's the Talbot quote. Correct. And, okay, that's the more expensive quote. Okay. Yeah, so that was to allow uh, for certain, but not all things to happen. So I've gone back to both of them as of, uh, I guess, last week to explain um, what we really need and if they could, you know, respond so that we're on an equal basis on these two. We're um, comparing apples to apples. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And right now it's not not quite there so i think the ten thousand is probably more likely uh to be the the, the amount and then it's uh the question will become whether it's a local or a, or a berry supplier so talbot of course being a local contract do a good job i'm sure um well that's it that you bring up a valid point i mean <laughs> During all that, during COVID and everything else, do we not want to support our, our local communities? You know, yeah. that's yeah, our local businesses, you know, like it's so it's it's got those kind of features in it, right? right. Well, and, and you got to look at the, the, the issue of servicing. If there's a problem, Talbot lives right in town and can service it. If right. we have an emergency breakdown or something goes wrong, where if we do, you know, if we use the company from Barry. So I think we got to consider all those facts. When yeah, we and make actually, a decision. Mr. Mr. Talbot was wonderful when there was a problem with our door and he really had nothing to do with yeah. it, but he came over to help along with Bill McDougall and between them, they got it fixed. So right. we were, we were lucky there too. But anyway, so that, that is yeah. good. Are there any more comments, questions, anything on the entry? And then do we want to, do we want, well, we have to put it off at least a month. Um, so I, I, if I may, I would, I would put I forth the motion hand that up. we- I've been waiting for somebody to notice that I've had my hand up for- Oh, I'm sorry, Patty, I didn't, I didn't see your hand uh, okay, up. Okay, Patty, you, you go like? first, I'll go what after you. What is it, you. Patty? See, I, I haven't got anything on my card. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, but that's a great idea. Um, I'm thinking that that's what I should have. Anyway, um, I was just tracing through, but in terms of money and financing, where this money is coming from and what the township is doing in the meeting that's going to be happening later today about the small halls. I'm wondering whether or not anybody from the township was um, in the RTO7 uh, presentation from Minister McLeod regarding the Ontario COVID grant funding money to small businesses and organizations and not-for-profits. Are you familiar with it, Barry? I'm familiar with it. Um, I know we applied, I know we got some extra money for, trans, for clean, transportation cleaning I have to, I, I, I'll be honest, I can't remember the exact details of it. So I'd have to, I'd have to look in. I know we applied for some funding. I right. know we got some funding back for extra cleaning costs and that for keeping the buses clean and that during transportation. As far as money that came to us for, uh, for small businesses, and that, I don't have to, I don't have to look, look, look into that. Um, but that small, in, in, in essence, that, the uh, station on the green would not qualify for that because station on the green is not classified as a separate business or an independent business. It's it's part of the uh, it's part part of the township. So well, I think that we would be better off to look at what the criteria is because not for profits are out there. And uh, yep. I just got a recent email from Minister McLeod to say that uh, there's an opportunity for hockey arenas, and so we may or may not come under that heading, but we're also part of a tourist destination, community hall. We've suffered because we haven't been able to host events and we're not making money. So I did actually send the information. I attended the seminar on behalf of, for my own personal tourism business. And I sent, I thought I sent the information to Linda and Brian about the grant money that is available 
but I just tried to retrace my emails and I'm not sure. Did you receive the email, Brian? Yes, yes, actually you did, Patty. And yeah. um, I looked at it and Brian looked at it and I talked to Barry. And when I asked Barry, he, he said what he just said, that because we are a township facility, we would not qualify. So we didn't look into it any further, but I mean, if there is a possibility that we would qualify, that would be terrific. But I honestly don't know the answer then. Yeah. Well, well, I, uh, you know, I, I, excuse I me, I'm talking now. now. Let me finish, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I just want to say this. Don't put any roadblocks on something that might end up getting a positive answer we're not coming at it from a township. We're coming at it as a, um, a community hall in the center of a small little town that's known to be a tourism destination. So we can come at it from a different direction. I don't think that we should be put a rope. Uh, the Barry is not the be all and end all. He's in the Clearview Township building. He, we're thinking about us in terms of our little community in our town and our <laughs> tourism destination. That's where I'm, I'm, I'm coming from. And um, I'm, I'm happy to say that I would be sending information towards uh, Linda and uh, Brian. If I make the phone calls, I'm gonna report back and let you know whether or not they put an absolute no or yes. And then after that, I'm off of the case because I have so much other work to do, but I know that Brian is probably very experienced in applying for government grants and speaking to the language that they listen to. Am I making an assumption, Brian? Would you be willing to file a request for funding? Uh, I have done government grants with the uh, CEWS and the TWS um, for another organization that I'm with. My, uh, off the top of my head, when I, when I saw what you sent, I thought, we're a municipality, they're not going to, <clears throat> give a municipality grants. Um, uh, however, um, as you say, we come at it from a different angle. We can take a look at it. Um, you don't want to look at it yourself, do you? No, oh, she doesn't. No. Well, uh, I'm not. So, so first of all, because I'm such a small business, it's specific to the tourism, I really don't qualify for the grant. But I'm also now running a real estate business and a farm, and I'm kind of overwhelmed right now about what's going on with COVID and running with real estate. That um, I just want to kind of say I'm, I'm still here for you, and I'm going to support this and provide you with information as I hear it, because as it pertains to marketing the the uh the hall that's probably you know that that's the avenue that i go with and also finding money and if there's if i get wind of a tourism money that's coming out i believe that station on the green is a tourism destination and certainly now with the village green aspect of it we we're trying to create a destination not only just for the community but it also, you know, obviously the brewery, everything, and everyone that comes and they want to have a wedding that's affordable and we've missed all that business, you know? So I think right. we can apply for the money. What do you think, Brian? If, all right, if you want to resend me that information, save me having to look at it because I'm not sure whether I saved it or not. Um, if you could resend it, um, <clears throat> I'll look into it. Thank and you. See what, see what we can do. Um, and can I throw some numbers at everybody? Yes. Okay, because I'm looking at the, uh, the numbers that Jeremy has provided for us. And thank you, Jeremy, for doing this. Um, I added in the HST. <clears throat> so for the Sallows uh, number, the uh, total with HST is 9,556.41. And if Barry is successful in getting the township to cover half of that, we'd be on the hook for about $4,780. And with Talbot putting the HST in there, it's around $11,775. And again, 
we pay half of that, it's 2,887. Now, given the balance in our bank account, which currently, <clears throat> according to my records, so this number won't be accurate because I don't have the bank statements. For some reason, they're not sending them. Um, closing balance, 12,888.40. We are losing uh, money, our total expenses each month at $670. Um, <clears throat> we've got right now at the current rate, we've we probably got 19 months before we start to get into the red. With the doors, the first one, the sallows, we've got about we pay for that 50% of the cost. We've got maybe 12 months. And with the Talbot, we've got maybe 10 months, which is like next, this coming December. And then we're, we're looking for money. Um, I don't know what's happening with COVID. Um, what I'm hearing in terms of vaccinations is that in about a month, we're gonna be swamped with vaccinations. But having said that, they've got to, jab everybody, right? And that is probably gonna take a year to do everybody. So we're looking at a long time frame, I think, um, before things get back to normal, if they do. Um, and we may be under some form of restrictions as well in terms of operating. So it, it's, I don't have a crystal ball. I, I can't see the future, but um, we aren't in the position of making money right now. We're in the position of either some months we're holding our own in other months, we're losing a little bit. Um, the solar panels is basically our main source of income, but we've got a loan payment every month and we've got the heating to pay every month and the water bills. Um, and so some months our costs are higher than our income. So I'm just throwing that out there so everyone is aware of, our, of the situation we're in. If the township wanted to pay the whole shot, that would be great. Um, and I, and I wonder too, that in the maintenance department with the township, do they not deal with doors? Or do they not have suppliers? They might have a better price. So I don't, I don't know, I throw that one out too. Good point. But, uh, if you send that information again to me, I'll, I'll take a look and see what I can find. Okay, thank you very much, both Patty and Brian for being involved in this. Barry, you were trying to say something, what would you like? Well, I, like I said, I'm very ha happy to talk to uh, to talk to Amanda, who does all her applications for grants and stuff like that. So I'm, I have no problem talking to her and, and see where uh, we stand on that. So I will do that. I, I've sent her an email already to find out when she's available for a chat. So I will talk to her and see what we hear from there. And, and if you guys want to go ahead. But, but usually if it's coming to a township, the application has to come from because it's a township on property property. My under, that's my understanding. I, you know, I, I'm not an expert on all this grand stuff that the province is doing. So all I, all I can do is request information and find out what's going on. And I am more than pleased to do that. Thank you, Gary. I'm going to just follow up with that and say that I think coming from a, um, a citizen um, not-for-profit perspective, would uh, benefit us and take it that direction as opposed to coming as an appeal from a township organization. Um, and I'm gonna, send, I'm gonna send you the email with the link for the information, Brian, and I'll CC you, Linda, so that it's uh, done. And um, I am, and I have been concerned, as I think we all have been, about the financial status as it uh, has been impacted by the Village on the Green construction disruption and then the COVID disruption. So we do need to get a little bit more in uh, touch with the finances or we're gonna run out of money and we haven't been able to hold a fundraiser. So, and we're not sure when. Now, can I also share you from the COVID perspective? I'm currently in Bermuda. I have been since the 3rd of December. Uh, they're doing an extremely good job at getting the vaccines out to their people. I've already had my first shot. My husband had his sex, second shot yesterday. They're uh, using community centers 
in order to give people the vaccines. So I'm having an idea in the back of my mind that the station on the green may end up being a location where they are going to give the vaccine out to people in the uh, Cremor area. I've, I've thought that too. Thank you, Patty. Yes, it's quite possible. Uh, Jeremy, your hand is up. Yes, uh, so um, the other comment I thought uh, was appropriate for this was the, the gift from Lana, which has not been uh, spent, right? And that's, that's right. not in your numbers, is it, Brian? As no, it, it's part of that uh, 12,888. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh. But I like that idea, Jeremy. I really liked your suggestion. I think Tom liked it too that to put Lana's uh, dedication on the threshold of the door yeah. is a nice sentiment. Yeah. I really like that idea. Good, thank you. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, Tom? Yeah, I, as far as the dedication is concerned, I don't think, you know, uh, Lara and Samantha or whatever or were expecting that. I think, it, I think it would be nice. I just don't think they were expecting to have any dedication. They were just wanting to use, use the money to help out the station on the green. Okay. Well, that would certainly help. And uh, a little, that would be a very big help. Yeah. And a, a small dedication in my, in my well, heart would be a nice thing to do. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see when we come to that point. We'll yeah. make a decision. Yeah. Um, any other comment, anything else that anybody wants to say about the entryway? Obviously, we are not making a decision today. This will be back on the agenda for next month. And hopefully next month, we may know a little bit more about money, either from the township or from applying for some, some grant money. We might know something. Yes, Jeremy, again? Yeah, just to, to follow up on that and for Brian, since it's embedded now in the general funds, uh, could we not uh, segregate that as, uh, as a <clears throat> amount so that it's not there available? Because it shouldn't be. It was, uh, yeah, it was a provision, I thought. What, yeah. Not for okay, so when, um, when we do the annual budget, Jeremy, it's, it's listed there as a separate uh, amount okay um, as well as any capital uh, expenses that we're looking at for the year that too is uh, entered as a separate amount yeah. Um, yeah. but we only have the one bank account so I mean all the funds are in that one account we yeah. have another we have a second account it's a lottery account um, but it's uh, there's there's different rules for the lottery account and I can't just put money in there and take it. if I want to take it out I got to get permission to take it out um, so I just, I just leave it in our general account, but it is segregated in terms of, if you look at our past budgets, you'll see it in there as a separate amount. As a sub account. Yeah. So we just have to remember that it's part of the balance. That's all. Okay. So Brian, this lottery account, is that part of the 12,888? No, there's like $10 in it or something. It's okay. $10. It's just, it's at some point they must've had a lottery or some right. kind of fundraiser and they opened that account, but there's rules under that. So I don't, Perfect. I don't touch it. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Perfect. All right, shall we go on to the next um, topic, which is the exterior update? Uh, hang on a sec, uh, oh, if I may, sorry. Point, of, point of order. I think we need to put forth a motion to defer that item. So I'm oh. putting forth the motion, somebody should second it. We should vote on deferring it, please. All right, who would like to move that we defer the, um, the main That's entry? That's all me. right, Barry and seconder, Jeremy, all in favor? Yep. Carrie, thank yep. you. And now on to the exterior update. And I think what, Pear and Tom were looking into that, correct? Yes, we met with Don, I believe it's Don, who did the interior. And he was going to give Pear a estimate uh, within a couple of days. And that was last week. And I, have, I haven't heard from Pear whether or not he's received it or not. We uh, sort of went around the building and all these little uh, things that hold the eaves up, those little yeah. uh, whatever, I don't know how many there are, but I would say 50 or 60 of them. It's going to be, I think, a fairly intensive painting job. 
It has to be clean. Did you hear? Oh, sorry, Pear, did you hear anything from them? Not yet. Not yet, okay. No. Yeah, I went and looked too, Tom. I can see what you're talking about, both of you, yes. So it's yeah, going to be a lot of work. A lot of work. It has to be uh, cleaned first. It looks either dirty or moldy or something. And then each one of those has to be painted, I guess, by hand. Oh boy, it'll take a while. And However, again, you can and again, money. Yes. Pardon, spray paint, Patty. It can be spray painted. I. No. I don't know that. Could they be, uh, you, be spray painted? Be kind of difficult, I think, without it spreading all over everywhere else. These little okay. uh, buttresses or whatever they are. So we will be continuing again. Talk. We've had our update, and so we will continue looking into that. But again, if it's going to take a lot of money, right now we don't have it. No, and it wouldn't be able to do it until it's warmer anyway. Spring. Like yeah, spring, summer. Yeah. So we can, um, when you get, um, pair, when you get some more information from the person, then maybe we, you know, you can make sure that it gets onto at least the agenda once the, once the information is available. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, now, parking lot sanding update. <laughs> I honestly don't know if it's been sanded very often or not. It's at least been plowed off but I haven't heard anything in particular. Um, and now that the place is not being used, it's not as important anyway. Um, nobody is going in and out. Um, so there, you know, so I think that we can probably worry about again next winter. Isn't that money saved? Well, the township, the township does it. They, they take care of that parking lot. Yeah. So, and, um, and they so just come in. It's just one of the problems that we ran into, Patty, was that they don't come in and deal that, with that parking lot very early on in the day. It's sort of after the roads, after everything. And one time when we were having, when things were still happening, there were people walking in and it was very slippery. And that's how that became a, an issue. Okay. Yeah, so, so Linda called me about that one day and... Uh... I called Dan and they, they had somebody go over and, and, and sand yeah. it. Within a, within a reasonable amount of time, they had somebody go over and, and sand yeah, it. Yeah, and actually I called the township one day when I was actually at the event and they did come right over and deal with it. But it's almost as though, you know, if, if in the middle of winter and we're going to have an event, uh, maybe we, you know, it, we, we'll think about it later on, but we may have to inform the township because if we've got people parking and walking into the main entrance and they're walking on icy, you know, icy grounds, we should, they should know that it, you know, it really does need to be sanded. And that's something that maybe we'll have to remember and think about. Kayla, keep reminding us, please. <laughs> Put it in the minutes. But um, yeah, we may have to. Um, anything else, guys? Because I wanted to tell you about what's gone on at the station where our little emergency was. Okay. Um, Do you know? I, mean, I got a call from Debbie Hill, who goes in and, you know, she's, she's the person who goes in and is cleaning the station and checking it. And she called, and one of the, the sinks in the kitchen was no longer running water. And so Jeremy and myself and my husband, Ron, we all scooted over to see what was going on. And, it, and then I also talked to, to Bill McDougall and basically what he said is we shouldn't have to worry about the pipes bursting because they are plastic. But what our major problem was, of course, was the extremely cold weather. And apparently, I don't quite understand this, but apparently the water, pipes that do the station run between the ceiling and the roof um, on the building. So this is one of the major issues that we have. So right now, what we ended up doing, we ended up turning up the heat. That station right now is sitting at 20. The heat is sitting at 20. We have also we went into the washrooms because the other day 
and Debbie called and one of the washroom taps in the ladies washroom wasn't functioning. And again, when you, that, that washroom is on an outside and exterior wall, it was very cold. And there is, um, there is a heater in that washroom and there's one in the men's. So anyway, we ended up turning on the heater in both of those. We ended up opening the doors that go from the main entrance into the washrooms so that everything is getting decent heat. We are still having problems with one of the sinks in the kitchen. It is still not running water from the cold water tap. And we are just hoping and waiting. I, we continually go over and check. Um, I went over yesterday. I know Jeremy has gone over. Sometimes I give my keys. My husband goes over. He just takes the keys and goes in and checks to make sure nothing is worse. And we are just hoping that with the heat going on in the station and with hopefully the weather warming up, maybe some of these problems will just go you know, away. manage to solve themselves. And um, I will let you know, but the one thing I, and I did, I called Brian right away to say, hey, you're gonna notice an increase in the heating bill. But it was either that or, you know, or running a risk. So that's where we're at. Brian? Yep. Um, since the station is not being used, and I gather the washrooms are closed, uh, why do we have yes, the water sir. turned on at all? Why Agreed. not just turn the water off for the whole building? Agreed. All right, now that is something that none of us has thought of. Oh, I do know why. You see, one of the things that we have to do because nothing is being used, when Debbie goes in twice a week, she has to turn the water off and on on all the taps and flush the toilets. Because if we don't do that, then we are running problems with our plumbing fixtures. Like I, I really don't understand, but there's little things that if they dry out because there's no use, then we end up having a lot more damage. Can I so speak that's to this? why. Can I speak mm -hmm. to this? Because yeah. I had um, a, my last year, somebody uh, left a door ajar, froze my pipes, the pipes burst. I know from experience what this is about. And we used to winterize that wing when we didn't use it, when it was just a residence. I think if we call um, Terry, Nash and get him to blow the pipes out and winterize that building. I mean, this is maybe too little too late, but um, this uh, unfortunately Debbie won't have a job, but the building should be winterized. This should have been done when the last COVID call came out where that was in uh, the end of January when uh, Trudeau shut down the, the country, right? Or it was even sooner than that, I don't know. All I know is I was supposed to come home on the 8th of January and I, I there's no flights in or out of here till the end of April. So uh, my bad, boo hoo, right? So yeah. anyway, <laughs> there's yeah, a- I feel, I feel sorry for you, Patty. I'm sorry, I really feel for you being that. in Bermuda, sorry. <laughs> There's a good bad thing about it, but I do know a little bit about this, having you know been the receiving end of uh, water pipe bursts, and um, you know there's different things that we could do. But I think that the expense of calling a, a plumber, and I also I use McKeever uh, for blowing out my pipes, and I and he's he'll be there in a minute. Uh, and Terry Nash, who's a neighborhood plumber dude, he's excellent, and they would come over and they would empty, you know, blow out the pipes. But the fear that I have right now is you don't have water. So there's potential damage already. And what happens- Oh, it's only one tap. It only is only one tap on one sink in the kitchen that's not functioning. Everything else in the, everything else in the station is functioning and the water is now running. It's just one tap. So what so I was the, the temperature in the, my laundry room was down to minus whatever. And then we closed the door and we turned the heat on and that's when the pipes burst. Jeremy? Yes, so, thank you. 
Uh, so uh, yeah, um, the one question I forget actually, are there sprinklers in the building? Because if that's the case, you wouldn't want to uh, turn out the water, pump the water. What did you What did you say, Jeremy? What? If what? Are, are there sprinklers? I can't think if there are sprinklers in the building. Oh, you mean for fire? fire. fire. Yes, yes, yes. That's so. That's true. Yeah. Um, that's I can't true. imagine that there aren't. But the next time I'm over, I'll look up. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I think, okay. But do they come from a hydrant system, right? They, they wouldn't, they come from a hydrant system, so when they kick on, they would provide water. I think this is, this is a plumbing question. Yeah, I, I, I really don't know. Actually, it's a Bill McDougall question I'll ask. Uh, Barry? Yeah, so I was going to say what Jeremy just said. I, I don't think we can turn the water off because generally speaking, my experience in dealing with uh, sprinklers and that, they're, they're typically not independent because there's typically only one water feed coming into the building. And if you shut the water off, now whether there's a separate shut off that you can turn the taps off and leave the sprinkler system going, I don't know, we'd have to look at it. But I have certainly had my share of experience with uh, freezing pipes, especially in this hundred year old house. And the fix is not that complicated. Uh, you know, I just simply bought some of the, you know, the foam tubes you put over top of your water pipes. And, uh, you know, so, so if these water pipes are above, are above the, the, the roof line or above the ceiling, but below the, below the roof, I assume we have access to that up there. It's, it's a matter of just putting some foam, uh, the, the, the foam wrapping that goes around. They're like three foot lengths and they're split and you just wrap them around. And I, I did it in my unheated crawl space and I've solved my water problems by doing I, that. Mary, I, I'm sorry. I don't think it's in a crawl space. I think it's something more from, according to no, Bill McDougall, no, it's, it's a lot more complicated than that. I, I, I understand. I wasn't suggesting it was in the crawl space. I was saying oh. my problem was in the crawl was in an unheated crawl space. We're having the same problem there. There's somewhere where the cold air is getting at these pipes. If we can determine where what pipe it is, then it, it's probably a simple solution to, of, of wrapping it with uh, one of these foam things. Right. Because the uh, that's what happens. You, you get the I, cold draft from outside coming into one particular spot where a particular pipe is running and that's why it's one tap that's freezing it's not the supply that's freezing it sounds like it's the feed to the one tap that's, that's yeah freezing. before it was more taps but we finally got it to the point where it's just this one mm. and again we we really can't turn off the water now at this point in time i wasn't going to spend the money to call a plumber for the one tap because i'm hoping that the heat and the fact that it's getting warmer outside might help solve the problem, but I guess it's up to us as a board. What should we do? Should we end up, should I, would you like me to call a plumber? And yes, Mr. Nash would be the plumber I would go to if he can even spend the time to come. Um, I would say, if you want me to try, I certainly will, but can we afford it or can we because we've got the heat up and everything working, do you think we should just put it aside for a bit? If if, if, if somebody's willing to go with me, I'd like to go over and just have a look and see if we can determine where which pipe is actually freezing and where where it's freezing. And before we call a plumber, and we may need we may very well need to call a plumber, but but I mean, I, I've plumbed an entire house before, so, you know, I, I'm pretty familiar with plumbing, pretty familiar with how it works. So Jeremy, I'd be happy to go you, over. Are you and willing at least... to go over with, with Barry? Is that what you're saying? Jeremy? I, 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 can, uh, I can show you, uh, Barry, I can show you at the access points, and it's very, 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 very difficult to, to trace it and to get access to, to where exactly that is. Um, but I can show it to you. Yeah, yeah. let's go have a look. Let's, so, yeah, you just two before we call a plumber, together. let's, let's yeah. not spend money if we don't have to. All if, right, if so we, Jeremy and Barry. If we have to call a plumber, we will, but if we don't, we won't. So Jeremy and Barry are going to go over and they're going to look at the situation. Tom? I'm just wondering how long you've had the heat turned up. How many days has it been turned up? Uh, Jer it's been at least, has it been a week, Jeremy? Not even, I think three. Uh, not quite. It's three. just. Just one, wonder whether it takes time to get to that one, you know pipe that's yeah 
And it, if it, it was, might very well, because as I said, this particular sink and this pipe is against an exterior wall. Mm -hmm. And so that is why this is the one that's still, we think, we don't know, but that's the one that is creating the issue at the moment. But if Barry and Jeremy go over, that'd be great. Pear? Pear? So further to Barry was saying, putting foam around a pipe, it would be also a simple solution to wrap a pyro 10 ax wire around the pipe and then plug it in and that will heat the pipe. Very cheap, very simple. Mm -hmm. If you've identified the actual cause and the problem of where the freezing occurs. I know, because my husband tried the usual, the tr you know, the uh, hair dryer thing. He worked at, the, at that particular area with the hair dryer to try to heat up. That's as much as we've tried for something like that, other than the, um, then turning up the, um, you know, turning up the heat. And I have no idea what you were talking about, Pear, but maybe the gentlemen do. You, I, I understand what Pear is saying. Yeah, we, first thing, that Pear is right. There, there's, there's, a, oh, there's many solutions. We just need to determine where the freezing is happening. So if you and Jeremy could do that, Pear? We knew about this problem from last year, if I'm correct. Many. And all the all the uh, drawers that are hiding hiding the pipes should be left open if they, they are, are not already. They are open. They have been open. We've been doing that. Okay. All right. So, so the idea is, if you can identify the section of pipe where the freezing occurs either put foam like Barry says, or an electrical wire. And possibly, yeah. Both. Okay, great. So uh, Jeremy and Barry are going to take care of looking into that. Um, now, um, we are into financial report time. So that would be Brian. All right, so Kayla sent a copy of the uh, January's report. And again, um, I do, do not have December's or January's bank statements. I requested them, but I haven't seen them yet. So it's based on my records. Um, and so certain thing, and EPCOR, sorry, not EPCOR, but um, our Enbridge does not send me bills anymore either, which is great, except that the money comes out of our account automatically. So that's the unfortunate part. And I tried to reach Enbridge and um, they're really hard to reach. So uh, I'm gonna pursue that. I don't know what's happened. I think they're sending the bills to the township office because Terry Vashon had one. Um, they may be sending them to him. So I don't really know what, if I don't get the bill, I, I can't tell what we're paying unless I get the statement. I can see it there and I don't get the statements either. So this does not include the uh, Enbridge expenses. Um, but as you can see, in terms of income, we are basically receiving the upcore credit, which this month was low, and that's because of the snow load on the uh, panels. And also, I am told that when it's really cold, the inverters don't function. They shut down. And so the, even if it's sunlight and it's generating electricity, the inverters don't record that, or well, they, they record it, but they don't transmit it. And so we might have a month where it's very low, such as January, um, but once it warms up, the inverters kick in again, and then they send all of that information forward so that we'll get caught up the next month. We don't lose that, um, but there's some fluctuation. And of course, when snow is on the solar panels, we are not generating electricity at all. Our average income for the last 14 months from the panels is $592 a month. So you can see the 142 is quite a dip and that I believe is mainly because of all the snow we've received. But um, normally that income level is much higher. And of course we have ongoing expenses with the bank charges, with custodial, with the loan payment and with 
the EPCOR, we have to pay for the electricity and also every second month we get a water bill. So this month, um, our net income was minus 508.56. Um, and that's a largely a reflection of the fact that we didn't get the, the 592 average EPCOR credit we normally would have gotten. Um, but our closing balance, and I, I, I wanna draw attention to this again, is 12,888.40 in terms of what I know. And that is going to continue to get lower and lower, I think, each month. Um, the EPCOR credit is saving us right now, um, but we, we, without any additional expenses, we can probably go for quite a while, as I said, 12 to 19 months. Um, but hopefully um, we can open again in some form of road that we can start to generate some additional income as well, because we do have these other expenses like the main entryway and uh, painting. So uh, we have to hopefully get some rental income at some point, although I don't see that happening probably till at the end of the summer, believe it or not. Right, and Pear has his hand up. Question, Pear? So Brian, uh, with respect to the low performance of the solar panels in comparison to previous month's income, would it make sense to, and in your opinion, would we be able to reach the solar panels with one of those roof snow removal scrapers <laughs> in order to increase from $140 to $600 our income? Whenever, whenever uh, oh, two, take it two off. Thoughts, two thoughts on that. Um, this dip is probably the first dip that I've seen in the last 14 months, which includes last winter as well. Um, and secondly, those panels are quite high from the ground, <clears throat> and I'd be concerned about damaging the panels, trying to take the snow off. And who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? <laughs> somebody, somebody with really long arms. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. I would be afraid of damaging the panel. I think this is a one-off pair. <clears throat> I don't think, I think the next report will see a big jump again, I'm hoping. But it has been consistently around $600 a month, five to $600 a month. I haven't seen a dip like this before. Uh, and Jeff Williams, who is the fellow who looks after it for us, he's indicated that it's mainly snow, and also mainly overcast. We, January was probably the worst month for overcast. I don't think we saw the sun more yeah. than about two days. And the snow is normally not a problem. I, you know, when I go by the, the station, it's, yeah, some of the panels are covered in snow, but the wind's blowing the other ones off. So we're always generating electricity. I think the main issue was um, it got cold and the inverters stopped reporting it and also the overcast. Um, so I'm thinking it's a one-off. Thank you. Anything so else on the financials? Any other Just questions? Just a question, Brian, on the uh, attachment you sent. I noticed that the we had income and expenses, and the difference was about $160 to the you know uh, expense side. And then at the bottom there was the balance between uh, 13 something down to 1288 or something. That's about three or four hundred dollars or di or three hundred dollars difference. I just wondered uh, why the difference between the two balances as opposed to the difference between expense and income. So our net income was five minus 508.56. So if you subtract that from 13,396.96, it should come up to 12,888.40. Okay. I guess I read it wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Brian. Any other questions for Brian? Oh, did you talk to Debbie, Brian? Oh, yes, I did. Um, okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so that's all ironed out, sorted out? It'll be, uh, it'll be all sorted out on this February pay. Okay, thank you. And where are we? Totally not under. May I ask something? 
Yes, of course you may. Um, I'm just wondering, are we getting any money from Village on the Green for business interruption? Uh, no. <laughs> Why not? Why? We don't have any business to interrupt. We're closed. Well, well you know what? Um, I, when is, when are, uh, when they're anticipated, first of all, in my mind, this is all I know. Uh, I don't think anybody knows. This is all I know, that our country's frozen in and everyone's locked down and they're starting to open restaurants, but this whole thing is nobody can get together for more than 25 people, if I understand that correctly. I'm starting to get calls about weddings. And this would be ordinarily when the station on the green would be getting inquiries for weddings and getting deposits and booking dates. But it, how, when will we be able to re resume activities at the station? When is the anticipated completion of this village green? I guess, Linda, you're the one that would answer to that, right? And I have no idea because the village green right now, I mean, in the spring, there's, I mean, they've done a great deal of work. I would imagine now everything will start going gung ho in the spring. I can't remember what they're hoping the opening date is, but right now, no, no one is calling about anything because nobody is going anywhere, doing it. Nobody anywhere. is going anywhere and nobody is planning anything. Well, the township so, closed it down. That's why. Yeah, the town we we closed it down. The township closed us down, and so there's nothing to plan. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting calls right now for June, July, August. People that want to host weddings and baby showers and things for the station. No, no for her I don't book that. Like that's handled by the new lady, right, Debbie? Well, and she hasn't started doing that yet because the, she's going to start doing that when the station reopens. But as of now, because it's closed, no, nothing is happening. And probably okay. if somebody did want to book it, they'd probably call the Echo right now still. What, what I'm, I guess what a, this is, I hope you think the, these are worthy of consideration, these questions because uh, we're going to be getting calls and inquiries. We are going to have requests to book in the spring. Everyone is uh, hopeful that this whole COVID thing will pass and they can, they can resume having events at the station. So we need to be in an anticipation mode for potential events so we can get some income. Uh, that's, you know, the whole object of where I'm going with this, right? So number one, we need somebody who is on in constant liaison with Village on the Green. And every time we have a meeting, we need to be an update. We need to have an update on the progress of Village Green because their project uh, affects our ability to provide a uh, venue. Yes or no? Yes. And, and then we need to have somebody who's actually handling any inquiries and booking calls, and they need to report back to us at these meetings because that's potential income. Yes or no? Yes, we do need to have somebody looking after those inquiries, but I believe that's Debbie's job, is it, is it not Debbie's it job? It is, but she hasn't started that yet because we, we haven't anybody. posted point is we, we haven't posted somebody. that as her job at this point in time because we are closed down. I suppose what I could do is I could talk to the um I could talk to the Echo and yeah, and because right now I would just you know, I, I will look into it and I will let you know what's going on because I will look into it. I'll talk to the Echo and see if anybody is calling them. I will then go and look at, you know, if I bring up our site, our website and see what it says about where to call if you're interested in booking. And then the other thing would be to get, like Debbie would have to set everything up to be able to do it. Pear? Pear? I think 
Patty is absolutely right in that the board will need to have whoever is a liaison with the station to monitor their progress and to also imply that as Patty is experiencing through her business inquiries for the upcoming season, and we hope we have one. And when we do have inquiries, we need to be able to say it will be open as of this date. So we need to be in in touch with the state or the village on the green as to their completion date. Absolutely. I, I will make that phone call to see if I can get a completion date plan. You know what that's, that's like. You get a completion date, maybe, <laughs> you know, because everything, anything with construction doesn't necessarily keep going on schedule. But I can certainly call and see if I can get a planned completion date. And, um, and we will see what that is. And then I will talk to the Echo and then I will talk to Debbie and see what, and I'll look at our website too, because well, I forget who did do our website, by the way. Stuart <laughs> Stevenson or somebody Stevenson. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It was Bill who did it, but I'm yeah. wondering who's going to, who is can update it in any way. Like, uh, anyway, I'll look into it and see what I can find out for the next meeting. Okay, I apologize for taking us on a sideways course with uh, the budget, but I just wanted to, you know, pull some ideas out and how we're going to recoup some income. And I'm going to, uh, let's say, let Brian finish his, and then we can put a motion for um, initiatives uh, after he's concluded his budget. I'm not trying to moderate the meeting. I'm just saying I, I stole Brian's thunder because we hadn't wrapped up the budget part. Brian, is there anything else on the budget? I don't have a budget at the moment because I have no idea uh, how to project what our income okay. or expenses are going to be this year. All right, and so, and you're finished with your financial report then? Um, yeah, a while ago. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Good, good. So can I just put a pass a motion that we're going to ask for um, a, a update from Village Green and um, a response from the Cremor Echo regarding uh, number one, I guess we should do number one first, Village Green. Let's uh, ask or, or confirm that Linda. Oh, we just, Patty just froze. Patty, can you come back? Okay. All right. Oh, here, Patty? Yes? Oh, you froze. So you, we totally lost you. You didn't finish what you were saying. Okay, let me repeat this. Hopefully it doesn't freeze. So I'd like to pass a motion that um, on the, in the future meetings that we hold, that there's going to be a report update from Village Green on their progress and anticipation of opening. Who seconds that? Uh, Barry, all in favor? Passed, carried. Great, and then the next thing is, we're going to have a report from the booking agent either Cremor Echo or Miss Hall on any inquiries. Has there been any inquiries or interest in uh, booking for events for the summer months? Okay, and that's Debbie Hill. Yes, and who would like to second that? All right, Pear, Pear, and who, and all in favor? Carrie. Great. So then we have next month, uh, we'll have an idea, we'll have a report back that we can use to see whether or not we're, we're turning down business, if there's been any interest at all. But from what I'm getting from my own, I've, I have to assume that there has been some inquiries. So Thank hopefully you very much. we'll be Thank able you. to present that to Village Green and say, okay, you guys, first of all, we know it's COVID. 
we can only we can still host an event, a baby shower of up to 25 people socially pack, practicing social distancing. So we don't have to say no to all these inquiries at this point. My qualification statement is basically based on the existing COVID regulations at the time of your booking, we will ask you to assume that and then and that's it and i'm taking reservations based on that but we'll be able to go back to station on the green if they're holding us up and say look it you've interfered with our potential op opportunity for income here and we need to ask you with all your fundraising maybe you're going to toss us a bone anyway Thank that's you. patty's finished thank you, <laughs> thank you Pat. yep makes sense I think that's no, those ideas are great. Anything else before we move on to building and landscaping? Is there anything on the building and landscaping that we haven't discussed? Okay. And any new business from anyone that we haven't had already? So do you want to just recap our business for the minutes so that we can say that we've addressed that the, the building issues and, and restoration and painting exterior, we don't have the money for it right now? Well, we have. We have done all of that. We've And I brought in the new business earlier when I talked about the water situation right. on the sink. So we're, we're pretty well done that. And... As far as I can see, is there anything anybody else would like to say about anything? I think we need a helicopter to fly low over the station to blow up. <laughs> oh, good idea, Jeremy. <laughs> you know that I have um, a neighbor who is a roofing business. I have two neighbors that have buckets that um, go up 50 feet and you can rent them or borrow them or they come over and and help you fix the shingles on your barn or whatever so yeah. if you ultimately felt that that was something that you wanted to blow off the roof of uh, we we have some people and i also regarding the restoration of the exterior i've got guys that are unemployed commercial airline pilots that are helping me take care of my stuff at the farm there's going to be a lot of people looking for jobs and so we could be getting quotes from anybody regarding this de details of painting and pay as little as 25 dollars an hour for it well we will we right we'll hear from don yeah, wait, we'll hear from Dawn and see what we get. Anything else, people? Because hey, if it, uh, <clears throat> Linda. Yes. Could could Ron get up on the roof with his hair dryer and get rid of that snow? Yeah, yeah. don't I wish. No. No, he can't. I, I wouldn't even let him. No, okay. I would just like to know, Linda, is it Ron's hair dryer or is it yours? It's mine. And the other thing you should all know is I'm so excited. I've got a hair appointment. I get my hair cut tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> there's, there's, there, that's exciting news around here these days. Yeah. It's about as exciting as it gets. And um, anything else? I think, you know, it's just, hey, listen, we're lucky that, that Ron and I live here and so does Jeremy because we've been going over quite regularly to check the station and the water and everything because of what's been going on. So we've been doing a lot of back and forth. So um, it's a good thing that, that a couple of us do live right here in town. It makes it easier That's for checking. Sure. And um, Debbie is being terrific. She offered to go over every single day and not charge us anymore if we needed it. So mm -hmm. she's being very, very nice. Right. Right. Anything else? Because I'm, I can be ready. I'm ready to adjourn the meeting unless anybody wants to say anything. Pear? I just want to thank Jeremy. Now I'm actually getting out of bed on Wednesday as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> anything else? 
that, All right, what, then what, I am going to adjourn I, this meeting. Can I, get, I just say, I, very nice to see everybody, and uh, I'm glad uh, we're all able. To, I'm glad I'm able to see you guys, not read the minutes. I know. Well, it is. It's nice to just see people and see faces. Isn't it exciting? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I would say the same. Say there the same go. thing. It's good to see everybody. Linda, um, next meeting March seventeenth. You want to touch on that? Yes, our next meeting is March seventeenth. What do you want me to touch on? That's when it is. Yeah, yeah. that's when it is. It's green. It's oh, wait a minute. Green? Leprechaun suits. <laughs> it's on March seventeenth. Let me just check something. Wednesday. It is on. It is on a Wednesday. It's March seventeenth. And yeah, our meetings are going to be on Wednesdays for a very long time because as you know, Jeremy has taken on a job. And so he is not available to come to meetings at, on Thursdays at all, so, or Fridays. So that's why we've switched it to Wednesday. So that's what we're doing. Hope well, that's all right for everybody. Hair? Yep. Oops. I was just oh. your hands up. Oh. Do you want Not to say anymore. anything, Pear? No, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, okay. Your hand was up. I didn't know. All oh, right. It was just twirling. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, listen, again, thank you all for being here. Much appreciated. And um, I will adjourn the meeting at 10, 11, and we will be back together at 9 a.m. on March 17th. Everybody has to wear green. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> Everybody has to wear green, okay. <laughs> and um, so, so the recommendation is that, that it is adjourned right now. Is this okay, Kayla? Okay. Thank and you. And we are good.